Alright, so this is going to be a guide on how to set up VR2 3D for all the currently supported displays. So to start off, I have created a folder here, and this is just for my convenience of the different uh, setups here. So let's start off with why you might want to install VR2 3D. So there's a lot of great VR mods that are out there now that provide good geometric 3D and you may want to run them without needing a uncomfortable headset. It gives you motion sickness and it also has a lower resolution than 3D screens effectively. I'm talking about the pixels per degree. Uh, the Quest 3 is around I think 25 pixels per degree and most 3D displays are 50 or greater. So it looks a lot higher resolution when you're running a game in 3D. Even though you're running the game at a lower in-game resolution per eye and a lower frame rate, so 60 hertz, instead of the higher, you know, 90 or 120, etc., and then much higher resolution requirements for VR to look good at all. Now there are some great VR mods out there in the Flat Screen 2 VR Discord. Uh, for instance, we have here RE Framework running Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, Luke Ross's mod being used to run Elden Ring. This is just a regular VR game, Thumper. And then there's also Doom VFR you can play. Most uh, Simulated driving games nowadays have a VR mode, and that works great with this. You can just run it on any 3D display. Uh, new games and the Unreal Engine VR injector can be run as well. This is Wukong. Uh, another RE Framework title, Resident Evil 4 Remake. And then Jedi Survivor were the examples here. I have pulled up on... Uh, my GitHub here, the guide to installing VR to 3D. We'll start here from this troubleshooting section. If you've used any kind of other Steam VR drivers before, uh, or you have other VR headsets or whatnot, you first want to start by unplugging those. And I'll just go through a quick clean Steam VR install here to make sure that. Everything's a nice clean slate to start off with. So I'm going to go into Steam, have Steam VR here. I'm going to uninstall it. Okay, and then I'm going to browse to where I have Steam installed. Normally it's under C, Program Files, Steam, uh, but in this case I have it here. So just keep that in mind for your own setup as we're going along. So I'm just going to go ahead and purge this Steam VR folder. And then I'm going to go under config and delete this Steam VR config as well. So now it should be clean and ready to go. All right, so we'll go back up here. This is the top of the GitHub. So when you're first installing this, you're going to scroll down and find this base installation section. So a multi-display configuration may be a little bit more compatible or easy to use because when this runs you're going to need the Steam VR window on your 3D display and then the games window will either be on a separate display or it will have to be uh, in the background behind it if you're running on a single display. Uh, I'll go ahead and the first thing you're going to need to do is install Steam VR so I'll kick that back off have it installed in the background here. 
So the types of displays that are compatible with VR2-3D are 3D TVs, 3D projectors, uh, AR glasses, uh, the Lume pads, and there's the SR displays, uh, the new glasses-less 3D displays, and those are working pretty well as well. Uh, and then finally, there's a 3D vision hardware. Uh, now these are only compatible with RTX 20X or older. And you'll run into some game compatibility issues as DX12 doesn't run well on the old drivers that are required for 3D vision. The compatible VR games and mods are documented on this compatibility list here. Uh, I won't touch too much on this, but there's certain settings you will need to have set up for your specific games to work properly. When you're in game, you can adjust the depth with control F3 and F4 and adjust the convergence with control F5 and F6. Now you probably want to mainly adjust the depth because this also affects the convergence some. Adjust the convergence as you need to, uh, but it may cause some black borders on the sides of the screen until you reload the game. Now to save your settings, after you've adjusted them, use Control F7. Also while in game for single display mode, you'll have Control F8, which will lock the SteamVR headset window to the foreground. And you can use Control F9 as needed to toggle your height from on the floor to standing. Uh, this is needed for some games to calibrate. And finally, we have the customizable controls section. I will dig into that a bit later. All right, so let's jump back down to the base installation. So you'll pick up the latest release, which is currently V1.5.0, and you'll just download the VR to 3D zip. And I have that over here in my folder. And so we're going to open this up. Uh, and then you're going to browse to your Steam folder. And then Steam Apps. And find our Steam VR folder. And then inside of Drivers. And you're just going to copy this folder in here. All right, so the next thing you need to do is you've got this in here. You need to browse into it, go into Resources settings and this default VR settings. So we're going to open this up here on the side and these are all the configuration settings. Now if you need to change any of these you have to close Steam VR and restart it uh, for the changes to take effect. So the most common thing you're going to have to do is change your resolution. So this window height and window width should be set to the full screen resolution of your display. So the current display I'm on is a 1440p display, so I'm going to go ahead and set it to 2560 by 1440. Now if you are running something like uh, AR glasses, those are full side by side, and you would do the 3840 by 1080, um, but most displays are uh, 16 by 9 and will be one of those resolutions. Now then you also have the render width and this is the actual resolution that the game's going to run at per eye. Uh, for my setup 1080p is about the most I can handle. Uh, newer GPUs and CPUs can probably do better. So I'll go we'll go one by one through the uh, options here so you have an idea of what they each do. Uh, they're all documented here under the configuration section on the GitHub. So the HMD height, this is something you shouldn't need to be touching. It's just the kind of the standing height of this virtual VR display. And for most games, just leaving it at one is fine. Some games will uh, have an issue where you need to uh, be around like 0.1 for you to be in the right position for, to see things in the game world. 
the aspect ratio is something else you shouldn't be touching. Uh, this is 16 by 9. Uh, the field of view is set to 90. You can adjust this if so desired. This is the default depth. This overrides the VR uh, interpupillary distance. Uh, so this is 0.5 meters. That's a pretty good setting uh, for 3D to get that more exaggerated depth and pop. This is the default convergence. Now this adjusts the field of view frustrum in or out. Some games don't like this as much and it may cause black bars on the sides of the screen. So you may have to adjust this convergence and then save it and then reload the game to get rid of those black bars. Generally, you probably just want to stick with adjusting the depth here because it does affect the convergence as well. This disable hotkeys, you generally won't need this. This is just if you're running uh, another mod that may conflict with the hotkeys for adjusting depth and convergence, like uh, Helix Vision. So tab enable here enables the top and bottom 3D output and side by side is the default. And then reverse enable, this flips the eyes if you need to do that for some reason. And this depth gauge, this will display the IPD depth gauge on the screen. This is off by default because if you're jumping between different presets, you don't want that popping up all the time. This is the borderless window setting. This is defaulted to true, and this works for most games and mods. Uh, but some games or mods will have trouble if they're running in open VR mode. Uh, now this is generally required for single screen, uh, but if you're on 3D vision, it's required for this to be false. Uh, so this is the display latency. Uh, you generally don't need to touch this. This is your display frequency. Uh, you can increase this if your display is more than 60 hertz. Um, although even in 3D vision, you get 60 hertz per eye, so you would leave this at 60. Uh, so this pitch and yaw enable are two settings that are primarily for VR only games, uh, as well as the Luke Ross mods. Uh, so these allow you to move the virtual VR headset uh, up and down and left and right to look around. Because in some games they'll lock the camera controls so your Xbox controller won't actually move the camera unless you set these. Uh, check the compatibility wiki to see if you need to use it. For mods like UEVR and RE Framework and UUVR, uh, you don't want to use this. The pose reset key is correlated to this pitch and yaw enable. If you've uh, moved the camera somewhere and you just want to recenter it back to the default position, uh, you can set this up. And we'll go into the virtual key codes in a little bit. The control toggle T is also related for the pitch and yaw enable. This allows you to turn on or off the pitch and yaw if you have them enabled. Now, this is useful if you've got a game that uses the right stick for things besides the camera control, like in a uh, space simulator, it may uh, move your or spacecraft around or control it in some way that is not related to the camera. So this pitch radius is also for the pitch enable flag. Uh, this makes it so that the camera will kind of orbit around the main character instead of just tilting up and down in a single position. The control dead zone is just the percentage of the stick that you have to move before the pitch or the yaw start working when they're enabled. And similarly, the control sensitivity is how quick that stick is going to respond to your movement. And now the bottom section here are the user settings for depth and convergence presets. So you can define as many depth and convergence presets as you want. 
Now when you do so, you need to make sure that you have a corresponding user load key, user store key, user key type, user depth, and user convergence. Uh, so you can see in the default settings, there's three set up. So you've got one, two, three. And so follow this example and add more if you so desire, or you can change these to however you like. So the user load key is a virtual key code that you can choose, as well as the user store key. So the load is just going to uh, load whatever you have set here as your depth and convergence. And the store key will allow you to update the setting that is used here when you use the load key. Now that only stores it temporarily. Uh, to store it permanently, you then need to use the control F7 key, and this will save all your depth and convergence settings. When using multiple presets, I recommend keeping the same convergence between all of them. As I mentioned before, the depth affects convergence as well, uh, but when you change convergence in game, you're likely to end up with black bars on the side, so just find a value you're comfortable with and try to use that throughout all your presets. Now when the settings are saved, they're unfortunately not saved back to this file here. So you need to go and check your Steam config and then Steam VR settings and you'll see this VR to 3D display section and this is where the convergence and depths are saved if you have changed them. So if you run into some issue or you need to make them all match up, you can check and see what they are here and you can just delete this whole section here and delete that extra comma and save it. And then go back to your default VR settings file and update them here or here or even up here as needed. Okay, and now the user key type. There's three options here. The switch is used if you just want to go from whatever you're at to the configured depth and convergence. Toggle allows you to jump to the user depth and convergence, but then when you press the key again, it will go back to whatever your previous depth and convergence was. And finally, hold. Uh, this is when you're holding it down a key, that depth and convergence becomes active. So it's useful for things like if you're aiming in a shooting game or whatnot, if you're holding that left trigger, it will change the depth and convergence to the user setting. And when you let it go, it pops back to the previous setting. All right, so that's a good summary of the default config settings here. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So as the instructions say here, go ahead and update virtual key codes if you want. We'll jump over to those real quick. So these are all of the possible keys that you can use. So at the top here are all of the keyboard keys. Now all these keyboard keys are only single keys. They cannot be used in a combination. And so you use the left side of this key value pair when you're placing it into the configuration. And then down here are all of the Xbox buttons that you can use. Uh, now two important things to note on the Xbox buttons. The guide button can be used, but when it is used, it cannot be used in combination with anything else. And then any of the other buttons can be used in a combination if so desired. Uh, so for example, over here, I've got this gamepad guide button, so I'm gonna keep that. Uh, but let's say this uh, for this hold example, uh, I have left trigger, but for whatever reason, I wanna add on the right trigger. Uh, I can come over here and grab this. And we'll do plus and then the other one. And then if you want to, you can add more, as many as you want. 
uh, for multiple button combinations. So I'll go ahead and save that. All right, and again, for single display mode, borderless windowed is enabled by default and the recommended for multiple display mode. You can turn this off if you want to, uh, but you have to be careful with keeping the headset full screen. So let's jump over to Steam VR and it should be ready for us to launch it now. All right, so this is what you want to see. You want to see this purple Steam VR background. And you'll notice there's this Steam VR little notice here. Uh, it mentions this headset notice about running as a monitor. Uh, just dismiss this. You don't need to worry about it. Here I've got my controller plugged in. I'll show if I'm holding the left trigger and right trigger. You'll see it change that depth and convergence. Um, as well as if I've got the guide button, I press that, it'll pop to that other convergence and depth, and then I press it again and it pops back. All right, so we're ready to test this now. Let's go ahead and go back over to Steam using Alt-Tab, and I'm going to use the game Lucky's Tale for this. Uh, it says controller's not supported, but it supports controllers. I'm going to hit play. And you can see it loading in the background here. Now you're going to have this game window as well as the VR headset window. Now for most games to work, you need this game window to be in focus or clicked on so that the controls and the audio actually function. Uh, for both single and multi-display mode, you want the game to be running in windowed mode. Uh, you can change this in most games in-game settings, or you can try Alt-Enter. Now, if you have a multi-monitor display, what you're going to want to do is set up your 3D display as your primary, and you will have the Steam VR window will launch there. And that'll be where your 3D displays, and then you're going to have your game window. And either you're going to try moving this over just by clicking and dragging, or you can use one of the keyboard shortcuts like Windows Left Right to move Windows over, or Shift Windows Left Right to try and move full screen programs over. That one doesn't work as often. All right, so let's go back to the headset window. Uh, so if you're on a single display, what you want to do is select your headset window and you're gonna use the control F8 key and that will make the headset window always on top. So now I can alt tab over to the game. Let's see the audio popped in there. And then we're going to use the controller, it'll work now too. And press start, and you can see that worked. Alright, so to exit from single display mode, you're going to click on the headset window again, and you're going to press control F8 to uh, let it go to the background again. And then we can alt tab over to the game, and then you can exit it. Uh, either through in-game settings, Alt F4, or clicking X. And so it's closing out there. And now we can go Alt Tab over to the Steam VR status. And now you can use Alt F4 to kill this, or if you can find your cursor, uh, just click on the X. All right, so that concludes a baseline setup. So let's jump into the next section and discuss interlace, checkerboard, and anaglyph. So you need to have the base installation done before proceeding with this. If you have a interlaced display and it is row or line interlaced, you're going to want to set the tab enable to true. And that's to make it so you don't lose both horizontal and vertical resolution and just lose one. 
Now conversely, you want the default tab enable false if you have a column interlaced display. So first thing we're going to need to do is download the latest reshade. So we'll jump over here and you want this one here with the full add-on support. So save that off somewhere. I've got it over in a folder here. So I'm going to run this executable. Just click OK on this. And now we need to browse to where SteamVR's executables are. So in this case, it's in the Steam, Steam Apps, Common, SteamVR, Bin, Win64. So we'll go ahead and select VR Server, click Open, and we click Next. Select DirectX 11, click Next. Now you want to uncheck all of the effects here. Click Next. Uh, we don't need any add-ons. Click Next and click Finish. So now Reshade has been installed to Steam VR, but we need to add a shader to it. So I'm just browsed over to this Win64 folder. Now we want to browse to the Reshade Shaders and Shaders folder and see all these FX files in here. So back in the instructions, you want to go to this 3D 2Ls FX. So this is going to pull up here. Now you're going to click this download raw file here and you'll save it off. Now I have it over here and I'm just going to copy it and paste it in to this folder here. All right, so now we're ready to start up Steam VR again. And you'll see Reshade loading here at the top. So go ahead and click on the headset window and press Home to pull up the Reshade menu. And we're going to go ahead and click Skip Tutorial. And now if performance mode is checked, make sure to uncheck it. And then you're going to select this Two Else script here. All right, and we're going to pull this up so we can see better. So uh, half or full, you don't need to adjust this. You're going to set the stereoscopic mode input to side by side. And then you're going to set the 3D display mode to what you need. So obviously we talk about line interlaced and whatnot. So we'll jump to that one. And now this is the line or row interlaced. And then if you want to do column interlaced, you can do that as well. Can't really tell on this display the difference. There's also checkerboard and also anaglyph. So whatever you need there is the settings you can use. Uh, don't touch the perspective slider uh, because that'll start moving content from one eye to the other. I can leave scaling support alone and interlace and anaglyph stuff alone. Uh, eye swap, uh, you can uncheck or check this if you need to. Uh, we can also change that reverse enable in the VR to 3D settings. So this is either way. And once you're all done here, you're going to want to click Performance Mode to make sure that Reshade is not causing any extra lag when it's running. And then you can click Home to close out a Reshade. And you're all set here. So then you can try running any game. I'll just launch Lucky again and show you it here working. So. That's what you'll get with the anaglyph display. Uh, for single display, you can use the control F8 to lock it in place. And for multi-display, you're going to want to move your game window over to another display. And after that's all set up, this should work the same as the base installation. And that concludes this section. All right, a quick aside between sections here. If you have Reshade installed in here and you need to clean it out, just delete anything that's called Reshade. Uh, as well as the dxgi.dll. So delete that and all these reshade files. All right, so for the next section, we have the simulated reality displays. Uh, the Acer one is currently on market and the Samsung one has been shown off as well as the Asus one, but those aren't currently available yet.
So eventually when the XR game bridge tool is more stable, you may want to use that instead of VR2 3D because there'll be less layers. The SR displays can work in either multi or single display environments. Uh, so make sure you read the base installation for how that should work. So to start with, uh, you're going to need to install the software package for your SR display. Uh, if yours didn't come with one, you need to install these two files here to get the runtime and the SDK set up for your display. So you can find those over here on the Leia Inc. GitHub. So you got this one and you got this one. So I've got them downloaded over here. Uh, I'm not going to run them because I do not have a SR display currently. But similar to the last section, we're going to use Reshade as the intermediary to convert from side by side to SR. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Reshade here. Uh, if you get this, just click more info, run anyway. Click OK. Now we need to again browse to this Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Steam VR, Bin, Win64 folder, and select your VR server. Click Open. Then click Next. Select DirectX 11. Click Next. Click Uncheck All here. Click Next. And you're going to scroll to the bottom here. You see this 3D game bridge. Click on that. And click Next and click finish. All right, so then we're going to jump over to Steam again. I'm going to launch Steam VR. And you'll see reshade there. And we'll go ahead and click home. And you can click skip tutorial. And we can go ahead and click performance mode here. And we want to go over to add-ons and make sure the SR reshade is checked here. So at this point, if you have an SR display, you shouldn't be seeing side by side. It should be starting to do the weaving and displaying in 3D. Now I do not, and if you did not install those executables from before, you'll get an error like this. Uh, so then we can press home, and then the SR reshade plugin allows you to press control two to turn 3D on or off. So try that as well if you do not see 3D. And after that's all set up, this should work the same as the base installation. And that concludes this section. So let's jump into the most complicated setup here with 3D Vision. Now unfortunately, since NVIDIA discontinued it and only the older drivers will work, uh, you can have some issues with certain games. So only up through driver 45206 may work. So only RTX 20 series is going to work with this. Some DX12 games are not compatible with these old drivers. They'll just crash completely or refuse to run. If you have 3D Vision enabled, that will crash DX12 games. Make sure your game runs with 3D Vision disabled before you attempt to get it to run with VR to 3D. If you get a black screen while trying to run Steam VR and 3D Vision, you may have to do a hard reset. Uh, in worst case, you may need to use Display Driver Uninstaller to try to reset your driver and get this working. Only multiple display setups will work with 3D Vision because the 3D Steam VR window has to be full screen. But most games need you to have the game window in focus so that your controller works and the audio works. And those two things conflict with each other with a single display. So you'll have the VR display on your 3D vision monitor. And then you'll have the game window running on your second display. You could have a second display set up with sunshine and moonlight to your phone, uh, but that's more complicated and I'm not going to get into that here. So first of all, you need to make sure you complete the base installation of VR to 3D. Now we'll jump into this optional, if you want full resolution per eye instead of half, which you normally get with side by side, what you want to do is go into NVIDIA control panel. And you're going to go to the manage 3D settings. 
and you're going to find the DSR factors and you want to select this 4x, it says 5120 by 2880 and after that's added you click apply you can close out of NVIDIA control panel we're then going to go into your display settings right click your desktop and in your display settings here select your 3D vision monitor and you're going to go down to your resolution and you select that higher one of 5820 by 2880 uh, and I won't do it here to make sure the recording and all stays consistent So what you do is then go over to your VR to 3D settings, this default VR settings, and you want to set this window width and height to that 4x resolution. So that's where you would change it. Now for 3D vision hardware, I'd really recommend staying around 1080p. Uh, as the newer games, it's harder for uh, even the 2080 Ti I'm using to run them. And so I'm going to go ahead and revert this back since I'm not going to do that while I'm recording. And then the other important thing is you need to set this debug enable to false. This allows the Steam VR to run in full screen mode. So go ahead and click save download the side-by-side -side to 3d vision tool from Bob here uh, so I already have this downloaded in my 3d vision folder uh, so I'll skip over that and then we're going to go over to the zip file and we'll jump over to this folder here this is your steam steam apps common steam VR bin win64 folder and in here, you're going to drag and drop all of these. I already copied them in here, so I'm just going to replace them. Uh, now, if you happen to use one of the other reshade installations, you need to completely clean that out before, because this is a very special version of reshade for 3D vision. All right, so with that done, we then need to move over to 3D Fix Manager. So I have a shortcut for it here. I'm going to launch it up. Now the first things first, if you for some reason don't have your 3D Vision driver installed, you can do so over in the Drivers tab here. Now only 45206 is supported, uh, or 42531, but it's a little less compatible with DX12 games. And what you're going to need to do is select the 3D button here, as well as the global hack here. Uh, you need both of them enabled for this to work. And I'll go ahead and minimize this for now. And now we're ready to try running Steam VR. So the key part of this dance to get games working is 3D is enabled when you launch Steam VR. And you have to launch Steam VR separately before any games you run. So Steam VR loaded here. I'm going to click Home, and you'll see there's this SBS to double here. We're going to select this and click Reload. Now nothing happened on my screen because I'm not currently in 3D vision mode, but you should see it turn into 3D here. Once you click Home and go back here, there's a couple of troubleshooting steps you can try if it didn't work. Uh, for one thing, if it's not full screen mode. Um, like you see the Steam VR status here, it will tell you that the full screen is not enabled. So you can try clicking enable full screen mode and sometimes that works. Other times you just need to click on your mouse on the Steam VR window. You can also try the Control T shortcut for 3D vision. Um, and sometimes just restarting Steam VR is what needs to happen to get it to work. All right, so after you've got this done, Steam VR is ready to go. Uh, and make sure your reshade, that's selected, and you've got performance mode enabled. And then let's go back over to, we'll use the 3D Fix Manager. 
So you're going to use this, you can turn off 3D. And now what you can do is go over to your Steam and let's launch, uh, we'll just say we'll launch a game here. And it's going to load. And again, what you need to do is move this game window over to your second display. And then you go over to here and have this full screen for 3D Vision to engage. Now, if 3D Vision didn't stay enabled in Steam VR, like you see a red text at the bottom that says not 3D Vision mode, uh, then what you need to do after your game is loaded to the main menu, you can go back over to 3D Fix Manager and turn on 3D again. And then hopefully when you go back over to your headset window here, 3D should engage and you should see 3D. There's some extra troubleshooting steps here you can try. Um, if the 3D is flickering on and off, you have to try toggling 3D in the NVIDIA control panel. And that pretty much concludes the 3D vision section. So in this final section, let's talk about some of the games and mods that you can run. So I have set up this wiki here with this table. But the game and mod, I put mods up here first and the current status. So compatible games should play just like native 3D games. Uh, playable games, you're going to have some issues maybe with the camera or with controls. And incompatible games just don't work whether it's like motion controls only um, or you get a black screen for some reason. And I also have this single display column to indicate if it needs the borderless window mode or not. Uh, by default, just leave it on borderless window and you probably won't have many issues. So as we were using before the Lucky's Tail, let's scroll down here to this. And the settings I recommend are enabling the pitch and yaw enable. So back in this default VR settings, we're going to enable pitch, set this to true and yaw, set this to true. And now we're going to go over to Lucky's Tail and launch it. And if you have your setup all set, it should launch Steam VR as well as the game. Now, of course, if you are 3D Vision set up, you're going to have to go and launch Steam VR first. Uh, you can go ahead and click dismiss on this. Uh, since I'm demonstrating single display here, uh, you select the headset window and control F8 again. And then we'll alt tab over to Lucky's tail. And now on my controller, I'm going to go ahead and press my depth and convergence guide button here to make it a little bit uh, less deep for this menu here. Uh, and then the left and right stick, you'll see I'm moving it around here. Now unfortunately, SteamVR just creates these like a uh, trapezoidal black bars as you're moving around a headset. Um, I haven't found a good way around that, so that's kind of what you're stuck with if you're using the yaw or pitch emulation. So from that you can just start up a game here and use the yaw and pitch to look around. And I'll just play shortly a little bit here to show how this works. Uh, so I'll just jump into a level here. And so you see you can look all around, even just the controller, and move your character around. Alright, so that's a good example of the pitch and yaw emulation. Now, for most games, if they're not VR games, you're not going to want to use this. Um, so we'll use Control F8. And then we're going to close Lucky's Tail. And I'm going to go ahead and close Steam VR so I can disable that pitch and yaw emulation. Okay, that's back to normal. Now I'll quickly go over um, using RE framework 
Uh, so this is for Resident Evil engine games. Uh, the one I use the most is probably Monster Hunter Rise, uh, but all the most recent Resident Evil games work, uh, as well as Devil May Cry 5, and Dragon's Dogma 2 is a little bit iffy, as well as um, Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess, I think it's called. Uh, that one's a little bit more work in progress. Uh, so what you do is you go over to this RE Framework GitHub and you'll download the Monster Hunter Rise zip file. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just download that to my temp folder here. And then you have all these files here. And I'm going to go to Steam. And I played it recently, so I'm going to go and click Manage. And then Browse Local Files. And then this is the place you want to dump them. For this particular game, I recommend just using OpenXR. So we'll skip OpenVR, and you can just copy this over here, and it's going to replace. That's OK. And then I'm going to launch the game. And usually the first time you launch this game in VR, it may have to recompile shaders or something like that. Um, so as it loads here, you'll see the RE framework opening up here. And then you'll see Steam VR launching and displaying. All right. So I selected this window so I can control it here. Um, this game in particular does not like being moved around unless you tell it where to go. Um, so you go into your options, your display, and select your second display if you're doing multi-monitor or single monitor, it's fine as is. And then also set it to windowed mode, otherwise you'll have control issues. All right, so with that set, you can Alt tab back over to your headset window. And we'll do Control F8 again. I'm going to Alt tab to Monster Hunter Rise window, and then I can control it. And I'll just log into my game here. All right, and now I'm in game. Uh, so if you need to adjust settings with this, with the VR mod, I'm going to go ahead and click on my window, Control F8. I'm going to go back over to Monster Hunter Rise, and I'm going to press Insert. Uh, now the things you might want to modify, let's see, probably under VR. Yeah, so the UI scale and distance. So you may want to push those out and then scale it up so that it's further away, but also bigger. Um, that works pretty well to make it so you don't get a uncomfortable viewing. All right, so I think that covers Monster Hunter Rise pretty well. And in between games, you can leave your Steam VR running if you want to. Uh, it's not that important to close. Let's go back over here to our compatibility. Uh, so that was RE Framework. Uh, so let's jump into UEVR. Uh, so this one, it works as an injector instead of a drop-in DLL. Uh, you shouldn't need to change any settings in your VR to 3D. Uh, so just download the latest release, or you can go and find the UEVR Nightly and download this if you want to. So it has profiles that you can load in and use for individual games. All right, so you're gonna have the game launched and it's going to be running before you inject VR into it. All right, so now the game's up and running. I'll let it get to the main menu and Then I need to launch 
my UEVR injector. I'm using the nightly, um, but you can use the regular one. And this will pop up here. And then you're going to select Hogwarts Legacy in this case. Now it's very important to go and check the flat screen to VR Discord and check what people say for the settings they use or if they provide a profile. Sometimes the profile is just for motion controls and that's not needed <laughs> here. Um, but the most important thing to check is the VR rendering method. Now, if a game can work with native stereo, it's going to have a lot better performance. But a lot of games require sync sequential to make sure you don't have any uh, one-eye issues or broken effects. So Hogwarts, unfortunately, is one that requires sync sequential. And then usually, as well, you use skip draw as the sequential method. And the other thing you want to potentially turn on is the VR ghosting fix. This makes it so that temporal anti-aliasing, TAA, uh, doesn't have the nasty ghosting around foreground objects. Uh, so you almost always want this on for Unreal Engine games. Uh, some games it breaks ambient occlusion in certain cases. Um, in others it just makes the game crash. So you have to play with it and see uh, if each game works with it and just check the flat screen to VR or Discord. Uh, so with those set, uh, Open VR is usually the recommended one to run with here and we'll click inject. Uh, but if Open VR doesn't work, you can try Open XR. So give it a sec here. It takes a little bit to inject. All right, and in my settings, I disabled the game window here, so it's not taking extra rendering. Uh, so you can press insert if you want to pull up that UEVR menu. Many times the UEVR will falsely identify DLSS frame generation as being turned on. Uh, this can happen if you're just using DLSS, or sometimes it just happens even if you're not using DLSS. So this can be a false positive. Just make sure frame generation is turned off in-game. Now you can bring back the desktop spectator view by just clicking this. Uh, but I'm going to leave it disabled here. And you can adjust the UI distance and size just like the RE framework. You can see that adjusts like that in the game. And then the size as well. So, those are the main settings you probably want to play with in game. Um, I'll just go ahead and click insert to close it. So, like the other games, we're going to go and select the VR headset window here for a single display mode. Control F8. I'm going to Alt Tab over to Hogwarts Legacy and now I can load my character. All right, now I'm in game with Geometric 3D. And we'll go ahead and close out here. Um, so again, you want to set up your hotkeys for your games, I'm going to go ahead and click the guide button so it'll make this not so eye straining. Um, and then you can click it again to go back and forth. That's the toggle version.